Hello, welcome back. I'm Andreas Chat, your tech curious web designer. In this video, we will upgrade the product page, allowing users to select options without refreshing the entire page and therefore creating a much better user experience. But before we get started, a quick shout out to my new supporters on Patreon. A fist bump to Mike and a high five to Marcel, Nikita and Sahib. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And if you like this content, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you're new. That helps me to grow my channel and to reach more people. Thank you so much. Okay, and now without further ado, let's dive in. So in this tutorial, we will add HTMX to this page to load the different t-shirt images and Alpine.js to highlight the different options we are selecting, all without refreshing the page. For example, I display here the different products by color, selecting the sizes and the quality. And it automatically also updates the parameters in the URL. Let's get started. Carrying on from the last video, when we select any option here, the page is refreshing, which is not a good user experience and makes the selection very slow. Let's fix this now. So I'm going to my product page in the Stripe folder, to templates, then to product.html. And first I will disable the automatic page refresh. So we do this in the JavaScript block at the bottom of this file. And here I get rid of the window.location.reload. And now I will add the HTMX code to load in the product image if I select a color. So here we have our color selection. And I'm adding here now my HTMX attributes. I will create the update product view function and I will pass through the product ID. And I also attach the color parameter. And I target the product image. Now let's add this ID to the element. Here we display the image of a product variation. And here I'm adding the ID. OK, save this file. Now let's add the path. Here we call the update product view function. Let's create this function now. First, I try to get the product variation. And then I'm looking for the correct product variation object and set it initially to none. So if a product variation exists, I get the color value from the URL, then I fetch the color object, and with this we can retrieve the color variation object. From the product variation instance, I target the related product variation object with underscore set, which gives me a list of objects related to this product variation. However, we can also give it a related name, which makes it more readable. For this, I'm going to the models.py file. So here we have the product variation object table. And here I'm adding variation objects as the related name. But before we can do the migrations, we have to finish the function and save the views.py file. I add here the get function and retrieve the object by the color. OK, and now we can do the migrations. Python managed to pi make migrations and Python managed to pi migrate. And run the server again. And now instead of production variation object underscore set, we can use the related name variation underscore objects. Okay. And then I return this object. 
I will create here a product variation.html partial. And I'm passing through the product variation object. Now let's create this file. So I copy the name, go to my partials folder, and create a new file. And now I'm copying this code block to display the product image over to the partial. So copy and paste. And include it back in here. OK, save this file and let's check it out. I refresh the page. I'm clicking on red. And we got the red t-shirt without refreshing the page. Nice. Nice. OK, now let's also fix the highlighted border on the selected color. For this, I will use AlpineJS to save the state of each option in a variable. So here we have the container which contains all our options. And here I'm initializing the AlpineJS variables. So if we have a product variation object, I'm defining here a xData attribute. And as first I add the selected color variable, which initially gets the value from the URL parameter. But I also add a default. If there is no color parameter in the URL, I get it from the product variation object. Okay, then we go to the color selection. I add here add click, which is an AlpineJS event. So when the user clicks on a color, the selected color variable is updated with a new color. But we define two click events here now, one to update the AlpineJS variable and the onClick event to update the URL. We can combine them both into one click event. I copy the function call, then get rid of the onClick event. Then add here a semicolon and paste it in here. And we can use it now the selected color variable. Like that. Next, I'm getting rid of the if statement here, which is using the color object from the backend. But add this logic now with AlpineJS. So if the color is equal to the selected color, we add a blue border. OK, save this file. And let's check it out. I refresh the page. And as we can see, at the moment, the blue t-shirt is selected. I select black, green, and red. All right. The highlight is working. Next, let's add the same logic to the size selection. I add the selected size variable to store the state of the size, the initial value we get from the URL, or it is S for small, by default. Then we add the click event. This is the click event for the size selection. Let's combine it again with the on click event. Like that. And add the border class for the highlight with AlpineJS. OK, save this file. I refresh the page, I select L or M, and as we can see the highlight changed and also the size parameter in the URL is updated. And lastly, let's add the quality. I add here the selected quality variable and add the initial value coming from the URL and the default value. 
eine Art der Click Event. Und Art der Border Class. Okay, save this file. Let's test this. Refresh the page. Then click normal. Great, the highlight works. But we also have to update the value for the price now, which still shows the premium price. For this, I add another variable. Current price, and I set it initially to the product price. And here we display the price. And again the condition, if we don't have a product variation object, I display the product price. Else, I display the value of the current price variable with AlpineJS. And then I close it with end if. Okay, and now we add the value for this current price variable when we select the quality. So here we set already the value for the quality. And I'm adding here also the current price. Okay, save this file and let's check it out. I refresh the page. And as we can see, the price changed already to the normal price. And if I click premium, it changes to the premium price. Great. And with that, we modified this page to avoid refreshing and have a fast and smooth user experience now. So I select here normal, large, and the green t-shirt. Let's clean up also the backend quickly. I'm going to the view stop UI file. And here in the product view, we can get rid of the color, size and quality in the context, as we don't use them anymore in the template. Okay, save this file. And now let's add this t-shirt to the card. But as we can see, the wrong t-shirt was added to the card. And this is because we don't pass the updated values for the options yet to the card. Let's fix that now. Here we have the Add to Card button. And as we can see, we pass here the parameters to the backend when the page loads. However, they are not being dynamically updated when we select a different option. And to get the dynamic values, I will use a form instead with hidden input fields. So I get rid of the parameters here, transform this element into a form, then I grab all the classes here and add them to a button element. And I also add the full width class, so that the button extends the whole width. And here instead of a get request, I change this now to a post request. And add here now my hidden input fields. So this is the hidden input field for the color. And with the AlpineJS attribute x-bind, I add here dynamically the value for the selected color. The same for the size, and the same for the quality. Alright, save this file, and now we quickly update the add to cart function in our views. So I'm going to my views to py file, then we have here add to cart, and instead of a get request, we are using now a post request. All right, save this file and let's check it out. I refresh the page, now select blue, XL, 
and Premium and Add to Cart. Nice! As we can see, we have now the blue t-shirt with XL and Premium. Let's also add a green t-shirt with large and normal. Perfect! As last, let's also add a normal item, which doesn't have a variation. So I'm going to the shop, I select here the hat, add to cart, and we have the hat here. Perfect! Alright, this is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this content, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you're new. Thank you so much. In the next video, we will look into how to add subscriptions. Until then, stay curious, my friends, and bye bye for now.